Hey everyone, what's up? We're for Gorilla Poker. A bit late, but doing a, a nice four tabling session for you guys. Mixing 1k and 500, I, I actually couldn't find easily 1k tables. I was just playing heads up for a while with uh, Chris Quinn, I think it's called. Pretty nice guy. Yeah, let, let's hope it goes well. He was doing actually the the heads up straddle strat. I don't know how many of you guys know that, but you can straddle heads up on this site. I don't think you can on most sites, and it it creates kind of interesting strategic dynamics, and it's not as bad as you might think. It puts your opponent into a weird spot, so to speak. So. Yeah, no no relevant history with anyone. We'll just play the hands as they come along. King 4 suited, I'm gonna mostly call sometimes raise. I can throw in a raise. Queen 9 after betting turn and getting the diamond, I think. Kind of mandatory ish river bet, and we'll just go for a big size. Having the diamond and 9 is kind of nice. King 4 of clubs. Okay, make the nuts is always good. Good time to think of my range. Of course, I'd be checking back a ton, ton, ton of hands. But hands I can continue betting are going to be mainly... Mainly flushes, maybe sets. I I feel like just the fact that the flush gets there makes me want to not size super duper huge. So I'll obviously snap fold here. Just a, a general tendency that you see in solvers is that when flushes get there, there's something super dynamic about the board. So the huge sizings tend to come on the river rather than on the, the flop and the turn. So now this hand just played. Guys can rewind and see the hand. So basically, three way limped pot. Flop checked around, I have bet turn and over bet river, and the guy raises big. And given it's a paired board, this indicates likely a boat. So, you know, most likely since it's limp jack 3 or jack 7. And it's interesting to think what would he be bluffing with there, right? I think that's always an interesting question to ask. Is that a good spot to bluff or a bad bluff, spot to bluff, for example? When we have enough time, when we're not in hands, we can talk about that. Here, three-way, I think I will begin uh, with a bet. This is a relatively strong board for my range, relatively speaking. I say relatively twice, but yeah, good board for my range. Not to draw multi-way. I wouldn't like to really bet big with King-10 of hearts because it's such a disaster if anyone ever folds a flush. Draw. So I think check or bet small is going to be the play. And let's quickly see if we can get some more 510 action rather than the, the 500 action. The tables are filling up fast. Yeah. So not quite yet, but we'll get there. Yeah, so with, with a straddling, I had kind of a funny hand against this meteor guy where... I, I left the straddle on because we were straddling heads up, both of us. And then he joined and I straddled by accident and then he restraddled. So like high VPIP player, just the fact he restraddles shows he's in a you know, potentially gambling ty type of mood. So going to be interesting to try to pay attention to what's going on with him and what he's doing in hands. Okay, so flop with 6-8, I can better check. I think they're both fine. Go a variety of sizing is probably not too big, but turn, I think, is just a check. And yet the snap check back, I don't know what that implies exactly. And I'm trying to think, do I want to... I don't know if a 10 or a 9 would snap check back, so maybe I have the best hand and then maybe... You know, I want to make like $13 or something. No, snap fold. I did kind of want to make the $13 though. $13 would have been nice, but yeah, this guy's gone. 
and don't disrespect small bets. I think they are important and they add up because in the end we measure our win rate in big blinds per 100 hands. So if you can sneak in an extra big blind here or there in a good situation, definitely not not something to to disregard. Here with King 10 bottom left, we have this whole meta of, you know, I made a check raising course, now I'm check raising you. Had, had EC bet, of course. I think I'll, I'll just start throwing out bets with this hand. So yeah, had he bet and I check raised, we would have had maybe a, a meta type of thing. But ace king top left, I'm kind of inclined to call. Generally, I don't like calling these small river block bets in, in these situations, but I have a feeling pairs would have block bet before and 10 would bet bigger. So that kind of triggers my, my, the bullshit part of my brain. When you add it all together, I'm probably going to be wrong because these, these bets are valuable. A lot. But if you expect a block bet from a pair earlier somewhat often, then this makes no sense. Of course, I don't know, maybe he checked his pair with randomizer, right? That's kind of the thought process for me, bluff catching there. The microphone is working. We'll find, <laughs> find out when I finish the recording if I have to redo this one. I think I forgot to test. There is another 510 table, so we'll probably join this one. Sorry, it's off screen. We'll throw this here in a second. I'm playing the button out of respect to everyone watching. Um, have to always play the button. So I, I, I think actually the ace king hand was. It's kind of a fun bluff catching exercise. Nowhere, like I, I don't really know, but there is a decent potential the other guy kind of messed up or winged his sizing there, according to the size I saw in, in, in the handy showdown. But yeah, we're never gonna know unless we play him a lot more. Okay, this goes check check. I really like this hand. It's a really strong hand. Check back range for him can have all sorts of things, but a lot of the things it's going to have are ace king and ace queen. And I really like those hands when I have ace two, so I'm probably checking again. I really don't want him, you know, even if he has ace nine, I just don't want to see a fold. And then once we get to the river, the hand is just in the range where I should probably be throwing in a value bet. So uh, I will do that. This is probably even too small. Yeah, it's probably too small. I, I should have given that some more thought. Because when you look at the run out, 10 deuce, 4, 6, 6, it's so low. Three bet ranges are so high card heavy. Ace deuce is actually a, a really, really strong hand by the river. I wouldn't be surprised if I could, you know, hot bet or, or something of that nature and practice in that spot. I don't know how, how long is a good length for these sessions to be, because YouTube videos tend to, to like short vids. It's really weird to make a really short live play session though. We'll see how it goes. See which size do you want to go? This size. Yeah, and the course that I made for upswing poker. Kind of a big picture. The idea of exploitative poker is that rather than worry too much about balancing my range, I'm more going on the offensive and thinking what types of mistakes are my opponents likely to make against various you know, sizings and strategies and lines. And rather than worry about balance, which is 
inherently a defensive poker concept where you try to balance your range in order for your opponent not to exploit you. I feel especially at these stakes that I'm but but at any stakes really that I'm better served by looking for mistakes that, that my opponents are making. So fours is a hand here that's right on the cusp and it's usually mixing. I'm gonna fold this time. Although I would have gotten a good flop. I was gonna say I, I had a feeling I'm getting a bad flop, but can't say that now. So yeah, it's the kind of hand that should fold sometimes, call sometimes there. Queen do so we check all a small bet, ten ten. You know, he could have a bunch of tens and he could have some one heart hands. The deuce is not very relevant. This is just a queen with no kicker. It does almost feel strong enough to bet, but not quite. I feel like these four flush run outs I, I might need stronger than a queen with no kicker to bet. I need a little bit. It, it's right on the border though, for me. Okay, we might have to call this one. And and here, the, the interesting dynamic that's worth thinking about is there is a 20 big blind stack and a small blind. Is that going to affect this guy's 3-bet range? And should it affect the guy's 3-bet range? And is it in a way that's good or bad for 4s? So all, all relevant questions for sure. Here, ace-10 is supposed to mix. We're supposed to mix tons and hands, and I'm going to mix it into checking back. And fours here, I think, is supposed to probably just call. Okay, and now we're going to start firing out some bets. Fours, I probably check fold the turn. I am ahead of lots of hands, right, with fours, but they have fairly decent equity against me, and when, when I'm behind, I am kind of dead. Okay, I, I don't see betting this is a real option. Very cool to get that amount of money from Ace King here. I'm not very sure. That doesn't seem correct from him. This is an interesting spot where I think because it's heads up, I get to call six max, obviously, would be doing more folding there. Like it's 8-9 king if it's button versus blinds. Offsuit hands like the worst ones that you open are... Oh, wait, let me think if I get to bluff threes. I, I think probably not. So if it's 6 max, this board gets smashed. But when it's heads up, Ages are just wider, so it, it's more okay. Oh, we're straddling again. So we'll, we'll do this for a few minutes and, and wrap up. Let's do no auto reload as long as we're there. This is, I feel close, but not good enough. Ace Queen suited, not really foldable here. Even though we went kind of big. For a cold four bet. Still cold. Ooh. Okay. It's a fairly good card. It's time to start bombing. And ace queen. I think probably call. <laughs> Could see myself going for like a check min raise or something. Yeah, let's check raise. Let's check raise. Ace ace queen and four bet pots is always an interesting hand to check raise bluff with because the other guy has so many ace king combos. So it puts him in in kind of weird spots sometimes. And probably keep firing. 
we'll go like 25 into Shali, it should work. Okay, 27. Okay, here we have to fold. May look like spew. I know lots of people don't have bluffs here except for stuff that's always stacking off, but you, you are supposed to do this stuff sometimes. And we'll check down the king high. A8 suited, I feel like that's a size that makes my hand probably fairly close. I think. I'm so rusty with preflop ranges, Re really apologize for that, guys. Yeah, well, let, let's call for the video. I, I don't know if that's a good call or not. Probably a little bit loose, but no like significant in any EV way. And then this is probably just a fault. Okay. Guess we're gonna see a flop with Ace 4 suited. Unless we want to go for this. This feels okay to do as well. No, it's just call. Just kind of to explain the thought process. Of course, th this is a spot where I am now completely winging it with Ace Four. I never straddle heads up. We're at a weird SPR. I'm not even reloading. So kind of cha chaos mode poker, which I think is is in general fairly cool to do. And Yeah, so given I'm completely winning, it kind of all tipped me off a little bit, and I, I don't know if this is correct or not. It was just that his sizing, considering the SPR, right? Like, I'm, I'm assuming he's winging his sizing as well. And his sizing felt a little bit sloppy in terms of pot committing, and if, if that makes sense. Ah! Caught me again with a straddle. Like, I, I had a feeling... Had he been bluffing, he might have been a bit more careful with the with the strat with the sizing there. That makes sense. It's probably close. Yeah, let's just limp limp and play with our straddling friend. Definitely calling river. Just to explain, very gut instinct thing, right? But he just half pot on the board pairing. I feel like he might be more greedy. There's a flush draw and straight draws and stuff. So not not believing that too much. So just calling. And that's kind of my thought process. Okay. Make of it what you will. But I, I have like a strong gut feeling of, of never ever folding there. So probably getting near time to wrap up. We'll, we'll do a few more minutes. Just the, the fact I'm not, not talking too much makes me think. It's kind of late here. Probably I'm a bit too tired to be making a video. Let's see if we can get in some last hands. We'll sit out next to the blind.
Okay. So probably time to wrap up. We'll make this the last hint. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy to do more of these if you want to. I, I, I mix hand reviews in these, like whenever. So. Yeah, I I would you know it's just the time I I I would like to make a high stakes for you guys one time uh, or sometime, but it it's just tough to find enough tables to make a, a session when I'm recording. Like it all depends on the hours. Like you can see, there's one here now, and there were not any earlier, so I'd have to do more. And I I could try doing one of those down the line for sure. Here it's going smaller than usual sizing, which starts making ace jack off close, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Last hand. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe to the channel, tell me what you think, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.